Hello once again, Calculus Cyber students. This is Mr. Meiring bringing you next installment of the Combinatorics uh, movies. We'll be looking at permutations and combinations here as we uh, go through our material. So um, the first thing we look at is permutations. So once again, we're talking about how we arrange, how we choose things out of a set. And so, for example, a great permutation question would be if I have to choose a garage code comprised of four distinct digits numbered from 0 to 9. If that's the case, how many different codes are there that I could possibly choose from? And so we talk about what a permutation is. It's when you have n objects and you want to use r of them in a particular order. And so um, the order mattering is extremely important for us to, to talk about a permutation. The next important thing is that replacement is not allowed because when you do replace things then you get into some other sorts of probabilities which are just as important but uh, not considered a permutation. So in order to look at this we'll go to our board here and um, as we take a look at this we think of the fact that there are going to be 10 digits. If there are 10 digits and we need to choose four of them and only four we think about, okay, well, how many different sort of combinations are there if that's the case? Well, I mean, if I don't have any digits yet, I, I can choose, there are 10 different options from 0 to 9. So my first digit could be um, any of those 10. Of course, since you cannot choose the same digit twice, then your next option is that, well, you only have 9 left to choose from. And then, since you've chosen 2 already, you only have 8 left to choose from, and then only 7 left to choose from. And so as you look at this, it's the actual number starts out by saying, well, you have 10 times 9 times 8 and 7. And that's it. Every single time in order to figure out your permutations, that's what you set up. And if we think about maybe wanting an actual uh, formula to help us figure out what we can do without having to write out all the options, you can imagine that could be difficult depending on how many you have to use. We look at this and you say, well, this looks an awful lot like um, your 10 factorial. It looks an awful lot like 10 factorial, but obviously it's not 10 factorial. So there's got to be something else going on there. And so because 10 factorial would be times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. And then that would be 10 factorial. Well, those aren't there, hence the different color. So what you can do is divide by that. Now, those you know, do cancel out, of course, and so you do end up with your correct answer of 10 times, eight times, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And so you do 10 factorial really divided by 6 factorial, which comes from a formula. 10 is the number of objects you're choosing from, and then you divide by that number minus how many objects you want to choose. So 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4. 10 minus 4 is obviously 6. And so that is what your formula is. And so as we go back to what we should be end up with, 10 times eight, 9 times 8 times 7, um, which is 10 factorial divided by 6. And that ends up with 5,040 different garage codes. So the key there is you have n objects, you want to choose r, the order does matter, and you cannot replace them. So that's permutation. Some different notations that go with your permutations are, um, you know, n p r, n is the total number, r is how many you're choosing. Uh, same for p of n over r, you might see that on occasion, or p and n comma r. All of those end up to be the same thing, which is your general formula for a permutation, n factorial divided by n minus r. Now, in our high school work, we are going to see the NPR a lot more often as we look at our calculator. We'll get there in a second. Uh, in your college and academia work, you might see uh, the parenthetical notation more often, and we'll talk about that once we get into our combinations, which is where we're heading next. So if we look at our combinations, we see that once again, a different sort of question. Let's say that I needed to choose four students out of the 110 Pathfinders to form the Leadership Council for Pathfinders. How many different combinations of a Leadership Council of those Pathfinders exist? And so the key here is that this is very similar to a permutation. I have 110 total, and I'm choosing four, 
but the order does not matter. So we'll go back to our board here as we start to look at this. And so um, once again, we think about the total of 110 pathfinders. And I'm going to choose four of them. Let's call those four A, B, C, and D. So once again, you know, I have four different spots here that I need to fill, or how many different options. And so very much like our last problem, I have 110 pathfinders to choose from at first. And then once I've chosen one, 109, 108, and 107. And so it starts to look very much like um, your permutation formula. You know, so you could say that this is times 106 factorial divided by 106 factorial, which that obviously will cancel out, but that will equal then 110 factorial divided by 106 factorial. But there's something different here because if it's a combination. So we have to do one more thing, and that's because if I look at this, if I look at this group of A, B, C, D, you know, that's assuming that those are those four right here. And those can be in any order. It doesn't really matter which order I choose, A, B, or C. So I could choose them right, A, B, C, D, or maybe A, C, B, D, or you know, all of your different options here. And I'm not going to write them all out because we know that if you have four different things and we're trying to arrange them, um, as this continues and we look at all of them, that goes to four factorial. So there are four factorial ways to arrange A, B, C, D. And since the order of them does not matter, I need to cancel out the fact of, or cancel out all of these. These, all of these different combinations are essentially, or excuse me, all these different arrangements are essentially, essentially one combination. And so to settle for that, we have to also divide by this four factorial. And so that's the key part here. That would also have to go here. And so as you end up with that, that, that is um, your number of combinations. You will always have less combinations than permutations. And this is going to equal 110 C4 would be the notation we could use for that. And so as we go back to the uh, slides here, um, the different notations, just like the P's, but instead of C, you know, it's the same thing. And one other one that we add if it's a combination is just without the C. If you see something in that form, 110 over 4, it's assuming that we're working with combinations. And so if you do all that mathematics, you end up with 110 factorial uh, divided by 4 factorial times 106, which is a whopping 5,773,185 combinations of a leadership council. <clears throat> Real quick, I want to go back to our calculator and take a look at how this can be entered in your calculator. It's pretty simple. Um, you must, I gave it to you, you must always start with uh, your N, so your total, 110. If you go to your math button, some of you may have seen this already, and go over to where it says probability, you see number two and number three are your permutations and combinations. So you can do both permutations and combinations with your calculator. The hardest part, part for me is to always enter the N first before I start typing stuff on my calculator. But here if you do 110, NCR, and then four, it will give you the 5,773,185. And so that's how you can do that on your calculator. If we um, go down to our combination formula, we look at all the different notations, um, you know, NCR with all the, and then also all the parentheses. Typically in high school, we use the NCR form. And then um, those all equal that formula for the combination. So whether you have your calculator or not, um, you know, obviously as you start working with factorials, it can be very difficult to do those without a calculator. So um, we typically stick with that. But it is important to understand um, where this formula comes from. So that finishes up our permutation and combination work. Um, that will be it. So hopefully you uh, understand a little bit more about combinatorics and we'll be able to handle the homework assignment.